In this video, we'll learn about upper and lower bounds and error intervals. This links to rounding. Error intervals will be the range of values that this number could have had before it was rounded. So 2.4 is one of them. 2.3 is also, because if I round 2.3 to the nearest whole number, it's going to give me 2. 2.2 as well, 2 2.1, 2.0, 1.9, 1.8, 1.7, 1.6, 1.5. And this is where I stop. Because if I got to 1.4, then that would be rounded to 1. So these values represent the error interval and what we're going to do is we're going to use an inequality to describe the range of values so if we think of the number as n because it can be a range of values it's going to be greater than or equal to 1.5 so it includes 1.5 and values higher than that but less than 2.5 so it does not include 2.5 because if you round the 2.5 to the nearest whole number it give you 3 so anything under that such as 2.4 2.3 and so on so this is the error interval in this case this is the lower bound and this is the upper bound Let's try this with another number. Let's take 1.2, round it to one decimal place. So this is what it's been rounded to. What values would round to this? Think of numbers with two decimal places. So it could have been 1 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.2, 1.2. 1.21, You can't go to 1.25 because that would round to 1.3. So if we think of the range of numbers or values as n, you could give it any other letter if you like, that needs to be greater than or equal to 1.15 and less than 1.25. So we've represented the error interval through this inequality. We've got the lower bound and we've got the upper bound. What do you notice? When we round the number to one decimal place, the range of values that we're going to have, the lower bound as well as the upper bound, will have two decimal places, so one more than the number we're looking at. A quick way to do this is, as the upper bound, if you compare them to, you just have a 5 after the number. Whereas the lower bound, you're taking away 1 from that last digit and put a 5 after. But what is the effect of this rounding when it comes to calculations? So if we have, let's say, a shape, let's just take a rectangle because it's quite simple to work with. And the dimensions of this rectangle have been rounded. At the moment, we've got 
4 meters and 2.3 meters. They have been rounded to one decimal place. And we asked to find the greatest possible area of this rectangle with the original dimensions. So to find the area, we multiply length by width. So the higher the dimensions, the higher the value of the area, the greater the area. So we're going to look at the upper bounds of both of them. The upper bound of this number, which is rounded to one decimal place, is going to be 2.35 metres. And the upper bound of 1.4 is going to be 1.45 meters. So all we're going to do here is 1.45 times What if we asked to find the lowest value of the area? So that means we're going to find the lower bounds. In this case, we're going to do 2.25 meters. And here we're going to do 1.35 meters. So. lowest value of the area will be 2.25 times 1.35 which is 3.0375 squared meters.